And like for me, I've always had a spiritual experience where whatever the intention is behind the tattoo I've gotten, that's become a part of who I am because that was my intention. Hey you guys, welcome back to the show. My name is Michaela and this is Raised and Redeemed. So today I'm gonna to be talking about tattoos, particularly my tattoos and a little mention about what I think God thinks about tattoos. But I was inspired to have this conversation with you because uh, one of my friends, Christina, was asking me the other day in Bible study what all of my different tattoos meant. So I thought that could be a fun conversation to talk about with you guys as well. Okay, so let's come right at both extremes here. There's definitely people on the one end of the spectrum that are way more legalist and think that they have to follow all these rules, but they don't entirely understand the heart posture or the actual relationship with God. So a lot of these people will cite Leviticus 19.28, which says, you shall not make any cuts on your body in mourning for the dead, nor make any tattoo marks on yourselves, for I am the Lord. So I'm just going to say first, you know, this is from the Old Testament, and that doesn't disqualify the importance um, of the Old Testament, but Jesus came after that and freed us from that law. So that doesn't mean, like I said, that the law wasn't important. The law is, is important, and it shows us, it should show us, all the ways in which we fall short of the glory of God and why we need Jesus. But Jesus did free us from that. So we have to remember too that these bodies belong to God and we are representatives of the kingdom. We just so happen now to live in a time where tattoos are very normalized. Like nobody cares. All the pastors pretty much have tattoos nowadays and people in business have tattoos. I mean, as long as you don't have anything crazy. That leads me to my next point, which is really just the intention behind what you have tattooed. I think that that's what matters more um, out in the world and to God as well. So I'm going to cite this verse from 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. So yes, these bodies are God's and God isn't all uptight about all these rules and stuff. God just cares that you love him and that you honor him and that you bring glory to him and what you do if you are a Christian because people are looking to you to be the example and to see a glimpse of Christ through you. So that leads me to my tattoos, which almost all of which I got before I was a believer and before I had the Holy Spirit in my life. So I've got some regrets, of course, and if you're watching the YouTube uh, version of this video, you are going to see my tattoos. I have seven, if I'm not mistaken, and while they all do tell a part of my story, if I could do laser tattoo removal one day, I might. Honestly, I go back and forth because on one end, they tell a part of my story. Some of them are scars, some of them are stories, and I wouldn't change that about myself. I wouldn't change who I am or what I've walked through. Um, but on the other end, do I wish I would have waited until I was older to decide on tattoos? Yes, as well. So, you know, 15 year old me, that's when I got my first tattoo. I would definitely go back and tell her, you know, maybe you want to wait until your brain fully develops because you might not even like what you're getting right now. But What's done is done. So my first tattoo, like I said, I got when I was 15 years old. And the reason I got this tattoo, um, so a little backstory about my mom. So my mom is an addict and specifically heroin has been like the thing that has ended her up in prison over and over and over again. And so when I was 15, she was going through a season of cleanness where she was sober and everything was good and I was seeing her regularly and she got tattooed on the inside of her arm where she used to shoot up strength. And 15 year old me, I was so hopeful, I was so excited, like this is gonna be the last time and I wanted to support her. So I wanted to get strength tattooed as well. So her brother, Don, who learned how to tattoo in prison, gave me my first tattoo on my mom's couch. It's literally like down by my underwear line, like on my hip and it says strength with a little infinity around it and it's now 
I don't know, almost 10 years old. It needs help. I've thought numerous times, should I, you know, give it, get it covered up or just wait and get it removed? And so right now it's just, it's just there. But also it's like a memory I have with my mom. So, you know, maybe I keep it, right? I don't know. I'll probably have this debate with myself um, until I'm wrinkly one day and it just doesn't even matter anymore. But so now into my second tattoo. My second tattoo is also full of Lots of dramatic, but like heartfelt meaning. So this is just who I am, guys. Um, but it's a little tulip on the inside of, or on the outside of my left ankle. So my grandfather, he was pretty much like my dad, the guy that raised me because I ended up on my dad's side of the family with those grandparents. And so my grandpa always told me, when I pass away one day, if you ever wanna find me, come to a tulip field. And I've since searched that, and I think there's like two in the world. Um, so I haven't been to those yet, but so my next best idea was I'm gonna get a tulip tattooed on me So then that's always gonna be something that's with me. So I actually like this tattoo a lot um, the artist was Just phenomenal and she was always booked out. So I was never able to get her again for my other tattoos She was in Arizona um, if I remember her handle I'll, I'll tag it here, but she was literally the best. It's like the perfect feminine little dainty uh, tulip with little dots around it and a little swirly. Love that one. It's so cute. And then my next tattoo I actually got on that same day. So I got two and three on the same day. Same artist. And this is my Pisces fish on the back side of my neck. So before I came to Jesus, I was really into the new age. I was really into astrology and tarot cards and mediumship and just all of these things. And I really resonated with the Pisces and I actually like always felt that about myself even since I was a little girl I read my horoscope so the Pisces was like super important to me so I wanted to get that tattooed on me if I were to explain what part of Pisces resonates with me now that I'm a believer and I don't look into any astrology it would just be honestly like the emotional intelligence the depth the intuitiveness so I now have that on my back for life this is another really beautiful tattoo do I wonder if people are looking at me sometimes like she's a Christian, but she also has this astrology tattoo on her? Yes, I, I wonder that. I wonder that often. Okay, so my next tattoo was a cactus on the other ankle. So this is the outside of my right ankle. So both of my outside ankles are tatted up. Um, so this is a little cactus with a half moon. It ended up looking really witchy, which is still pretty reflective of the season of my life I was in at the time that I got it. I didn't intend for this tattoo to look witchy. Honestly, it goes to show like, that was a part of my Arizona life when I was. I was super into all the witchcraft and all of this. But the tattoo, I got it because one of my friends from Indiana, Tiff Beer, she came to visit me and she's been one of my friends for many years and she wanted to get a tattoo. So I went along with her. I'm like, you know what, I'll get something small. I'm not that spontaneous anymore. Like I won't just up and go get a tattoo anymore. But at this season of my life, I was like, girl, I'm down. So I have this little guy, he, he's pretty cute. I don't, I won't hate on him. So everything has been fine up until this point, right? Like all of the tattoos, well, I mean, I guess besides for my first one, that was a little rocky, but the other ones have been great so far. You know, great artist, came out great. Um, and then I went through a really, really, really dark season of my life with you know, I think it was just, you know, all the new age practices and all the demons I was bringing into my life and the demonic relationships that brought into my life and just like the overall trauma and pain that I went through. And after Jesus saved me, I had a season where I wanted to go really dark. I wanted to repel away anybody that might fit that genre of the type of man that might want to come into my life and hurt me. So at that time I was waitressing at a golf club. I felt like creepy rich old men always saw me as like this soft, innocent, helpless, naive little flower that, you know, could be taken advantage of and said things to. And, and then the kind of guys I was dating, I also felt like guys just felt like they could come in and, and take advantage of me. Like they didn't realize, they didn't realize that like deep down I'm tough and I've like seen stuff and endured stuff. And so after I came to Christ, I was especially like, I'm shielded, I'm protected, like everybody back off, nobody's getting in. I just, I stepped into this warrior mentality unlike anything I'd ever been in before. I dyed my hair dark and I wanted more tattoos because I was like, nobody's gonna mess with me anymore. And so this leads me into 
my next tattoos. And this is the one on my forearm. It's really big, it's really dark. I really don't like it at all. Um, but I was having like this rough day at work and I was just really at my wits end. And if you've ever worked in the restaurant industry, you know how these kinds of people can be, like the management, just the staff. And it was just filled with this like this chaotic energy. And my boss just got mad at me one day and sent me home. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to take this as an opportunity to go get the tattoo I've been wanting to get for over a year. I'm just going to go get it and do something for myself. And I go straight to this tattoo shop that I've never been before, never researched it. And I was like, can you, can you fit me in today? He was like, we're fully booked. Um, we can schedule an appointment and you can come back another time. And I was like, no, I need to get in today. So that was my first mistake because if a place is fully booked and you know you push yourself in anyways, you're going to get like probably the lowest tier artist who's able to squeeze in some availability. Also, like some people might love her art, so not even to hate on her, but I didn't take the time to research the artist and for such a massive piece, like this is taking up my whole left forearm. You want to do your research to make sure that you even like the kind of art that that artist does. So I never knew that. I didn't think about that. Um, I was just all in. We're doing this today. I do struggle with a little bit of impulsiveness. So in the meantime, until she was ready, I went and I got ice cream and did all these things. And then I came back and I got this tattoo and I was watching her do it the whole time. And, you know, like a little mess up would happen here and she'd have to go over it again. And it just kept getting darker and darker and darker. Um, but I really tried to embrace it after I got it. And I was like, okay, so this, this is like my shield. And so if you're listening on the podcast, it's a big rose. And then it kind of has like a mandala, um, like pointed bottom to it, which are supposed to be like the leaves. And then the top has a little bit of leaves that are a little bit like mandala designed as well. And for me, it was like my, my like, yeah, my shield, my superhero shield like you've ever seen the superhero women they have these um like wrist bands around their wrist this was this was that for me so even though it was dark and it like wasn't my preferred art i still just owned it and i was like yeah so this is this is a part of me stepping into a new era of protecting myself and standing up for myself and i'm protected in christ and so yeah i really just owned this one for what it was but now you know, I might get this one removed, but it also, once again, this is also reflective of one of the biggest scars I've ever had in my life. And so I kind of like for people to know my scars as well, because I don't know, I just want to be fully known in the world. I don't want people to perceive me as one thing that I'm not and then treat me like that. I'd rather them know straight up what it is and treat me in alignment with what it really is. The next one I got is on my wrist. And it was actually inspired by the movie Move On. So I was watching it. I was so inspired. Um, at that point in my life, I was really, yeah, I was really inspired by Loyal, Brave, and True. The little symbols on her sword. Loyal, Brave, and True. So I was new in my walk with Christ. And I was really wondering, like, how can I be this woman that I want to be? How can I give up my past, give up the partying, giving, give up the hangups, give up the relationships, give up all these things that were really, really terrible for me and not in alignment with what it meant to be a follower of Christ. And, you know, the way I came to Christ was he came to me so drastically. It wasn't like I didn't have like a gradual buildup of like slowly getting to know him. No, it was like I saw a demon. And then right after that, Jesus presented himself to me because I was seeking, seeking, seeking like I knew I let darkness into my life and I knew I needed help. And Jesus was right there. First responder, left the 99, came for me. So I laid down everything, like cold turkey, 180, gave it to him. And then came the next part of like, okay, now how do I actually live in accordance with this? So loyal, I knew I was brave and I knew I was true, but I didn't know how I could be loyal. And so like loyal to, to him, loyal to myself, loyal to my values. So I like literally when you get a tattoo, I feel like it's this process of, of you become like this becomes a part of you, like you're etching it into your body and it's there for the rest of your life. 
And like for me, I've always had a spiritual experience where whatever the intention is behind the tattoo I've gotten, that's become a part of who I am because that was my intention. So on that same day, I got a finger tat of a cross on the inside of my middle finger and the artist definitely tried to talk me out of it. He's like, it's gonna get ugly, finger tats don't stay, but I wanted a cross and I wanted it on my hand where everybody could see it, I'm his. And so I got it, you know, it's fading a little bit, it could use a little touch up, but I still love that one. It's my smallest one and it might be my favorite one too. Okay, so I think that's all the tattoos I had and I really just, I explained, you know, how I felt about tattoos along the way. So I hope you're able to get something out of this or maybe just get to know me, your host, Michaela Nikolenko, a little bit better um, because tattoos, they really are a part of you. It's your message is literally on your body for the rest of the world to see. So now that I'm more settled in my faith and in who I am, I haven't had the urge to get anything new. And I also feel like I'm just not entirely content with what I currently have. So I'm like, uh, I'm not gonna like add on because I already have enough um, tattoo regrets, I guess I would say. So I'm not really eager to get anything new at this, at this point in my life, but I definitely don't see anything wrong with tattoos. I don't think God sees anything wrong with tattoos, but it is about the intention that goes into the tattoo that you get because that does become a part of you for the rest of your life. So if you're young, really, really think about it. If you're impulsive like me, you're gonna learn the hard way and then so what? You know, you have this ink on your body. It's a story to tell. If you guys like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm here every Wednesday and I'll see you guys next time.